Hello everyone. Today we're looking at the interview Chris and Debbie, the parents of Stephen Stearns, gave the police. This has so much ex this is just explosive. Honest to God. This is better than the interviews Jen gave. Or even Stephen gave. So much information coming out in this interview that I'll be doing it in two parts so that I keep the video short so then you're not sitting here for like two or three hours right so it's going to be in two parts and we'll get started so grab a coffee sit down and buckle up I may, I may fix a cup of coffee. I'm always thirsty these days. Lucy, we're both on diets. We're taking, uh, she's taking us in. Before we go any further, I'd just like to give a shout out to Plunged Up True Crimes and go over and subscribe. She does some brilliant work as well. Um, I'll put the full link in the description. So please go over and subscribe to Plunga True Crime. I think I'm taking a jar. Uh -huh. And I've lost nearly 40 pounds. Wow. 28 and I'm, and I'm uh, but I just have to keep hydrated all the time. It just looks thirsty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for meeting with us this morning. Um, Our pleasure. This has been a long few days, long week, or and I can imagine what it is for you yeah. guys. Full of lots of surprises. Yeah. We're in the seventh ring of hell. Uh, so the reason we made the trip down here today is I know you spoke to. Uh, Alex, I think. Yeah, Alex, yeah. yeah, with Orange County and may have spoke to Corporal Ilgen that works with us. Is he this tall, slim guy? No, was he's he Orange bald. County. He was, you, I think you may have talked to him out in the parking lot in, yeah. in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bald guy, probably wearing a swatch shirt. No, that didn't work. That didn't. <laughs> there was somebody else I, I thought was from uh, Pacific PD, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I thought actually you were him, but obviously not. <laughs> So you're better looking at you. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, but since I'm the lead detective and he's my partner in the case, we kind of want to get eyes and talk to everybody that's involved. That's the really reason. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the reason we're here is basically try to get a background of what you know about Stefan and Jennifer's relationship and that sort of thing and stuff like that. So. We can do it one of two ways. I can just give you guys the floor and you can let us know how, what their dynamic was, or I could do it question and answer wise, whatever's more comfortable for you. Well, if you do it question and answer wise, you'll get the answers that you wanted. If you let us sit here and ramble on for half an hour, you may not get what you want. You still have to ask the question. Fair enough. Fair enough for me. We can fill in the gaps. Yes. All right. So um, any idea how long Stefan and Jen have been in a relationship? Seven years. Seven years. Seven to eight years, somewhere in there. Okay. And was it constant throughout those seven and eight years or on and off? or <sighs> They were friends first, close friends first, and then it, it evolved into a romantic relationship. Um, I think probably the first 18 months was his friendship, and then it changed from there. And no, mm -hmm. we did not like the relationship. Why not? Didn't approve of it. No. Why she was bad influence on it because of her, uh, of her, uh, drugs. Well, drugs plus, uh, I think she was, uh, taking medications for depression, anxiety, what have you. And, and I just didn't feel that she was going to be a good influence for him. She's bipolar. She's bisexual. She's a drug addict. She had a young child. The family was disapproving. And she was sharing those drugs with Stefan. And I don't approve of vaping. 
We don't do any drugs. We don't even drink. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Using unprescribed drugs. I know she's on pre prescribed drugs. But she's also using unprescribed drugs. Which she was sharing with Stefan. Which wouldn't help him either. Unprescribed drugs don't help. Wow. I can't even take specified medication for pain because my body rejects them and I I get really, really sick from them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, went through open heart surgery on Tylenol. Wow. So, it's... Um, and they both... They were she's both she's she's they, they slept all the time. Yeah. And, and, she, and, you know, we had a hard enough time dealing with Stefan sleeping all the time and now he's got a... Uh, a relationship with somebody else that does it as well. It's just like they were feeding off of each other, none of it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I disapprove, I disapprove of a lot of Stephens. Well, that's the only people. thing, yeah, only thing her mother and I approved of together was the fact that we didn't approve of the relationship because if Jim started spiraling down when her holes of depression, she took Stefan with him. Mm -hmm. If he was depressed, he brought her in. And it was just always like a balancing act with those two. It's, this is not good. It's not a good dynamic. You know, when you said they were they were always sleeping, like constantly. Yeah. Was it be? Were they taking medicine to go sleeping, or yeah. they were just? They were just. Well, they were baked out. Yeah. Well, sleep, Stefan has a uh, yeah. uh, sleeping uh, disorder, sleep apnea, and so uh, he's been tested for it, and, and his uh, he would be uh, up all night and sleep all day. Okay. type of deal and uh, we really didn't have that much physical interaction with them mm -hmm. these are things that we just observe from uh, from a distance and you know trying to talk to Stefan at times and and but uh, we just really didn't have uh, a, any any social activity we wouldn't speak of when Stefan would be here in town, like what would his routine be? Would he just, is he a homebody or? He locked himself in his room and we would see him uh, maybe, you know, once in a while until dinner's ready, but he was constantly in his room all the time. He was painting his little minis for Warhammer. Okay. He spent a lot of time stuff. doing that. Um, a lot of time learning the new books as they came out, a lot of time online. Uh, he did. He did go play Warhammer with the guys once a week. Tried to get him to go to the beach, him to go to church. Tried to get him to go shooting with us. You know, just, did he give an excuse why that he wouldn't he want to go? Feel like it. Just no, no motivation. And mm -hmm. he walked around with Jen on the phone on Facetime all the time. I would be in the kitchen. I would look up and I would see Jen, and she's like, "Oh." And I look at her and her eyes are all so I said, Jen, are you baked? And she says, Oh yeah. I'm like, And this is recently or I mean, throughout the years? In the last few weeks, yeah. yeah. Okay. He he wasn't he, I brought him back in December because I was supporting so him. So she used to use a vape. Okay. And living there. And I didn't know that I was supporting the whole family. Mm -hmm. Again, Stefan's great omitting information, not being transparent with me. And uh, I just reached the point. I said, I can't, I can't afford to have you working for Disney. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's always a deficit in this budget for one reason or another. But somehow he had uh, expensive toys and what have you. Where the money came for that, he needed it after he arrived here. Packages would arrive. And I said, well, I'm not giving him any money. Where the hell is it? Step with this money I saved. And I said, you're going. Bohica. You know what Bohica is? It's an acronym. Bend over here, it comes again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he called me up and said, well, I've, you know, I'm short in funds. Can you, you know, sell me 150 bucks, send him that. But in the meanwhile, now he's telling me he's got money and savings, which I didn't believe. Mm -hmm. You know, so where, where the money was coming from, I have no idea. But these packages just kept arriving. When you would support him, how would you get him money? I sell it. Okay. And I paid him, you know, I, you know, uh, he, one charge gen rent and it's so, and then in November of 2022 uh 
the reason why I know that because I, I looked it up the other day. I said, how far back have I been paying rent there? But he started charging Stefan rent, even though he was sharing a room with Jen. Mm -hmm. And then they decided that they weren't going to be in a relationship anymore. And he took over a full room and now I had to pay $600. And so this just kept escalating. He wasn't taking care of his car. Um, you know, I was waiting for that shoe to drop. So finally, I just, I said, I can't afford you to live there anymore. And I moved him back here. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had hoped that the year that he had spent at Disney, that he had matured and, and mm -hmm. was now, uh, you know, uh, accepting responsibility and had a disciplined routine um, and that uh, I could bring him back here and help him maybe develop into something with a better career path than working for Disney forever and not, and not getting anywhere because mm -hmm. at $30,000 a year, he couldn't support himself if he, if he wanted to live on his own. Right. And uh, that that turned out to be a huge disappointment because he fell right back into his same MO, you know, locked himself in his room, you know, wouldn't help us around the house. And uh, we were like on eggshells because when he was here, it was always tension because of his sleep disorder and the dogs obviously are not the quietest things in the world. Right. And, you know, they have their routine. We have our routine. So we let them out in the evening, and it's a chaos with them. We let them out in the morning, it's chaos. But for the most of the time, they're uh, in feeding time. They're, uh, they're, they're quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. But, again, that would disturb them. It didn't, didn't want to cause a flare-up with them. So when, he would, when it would disturb him with the dogs, was that during the daytime or was no, him well, trying to sleep at night? Oh, it could be any time. Oh, okay. know, if anybody, anybody comes to the door... Get a package, a rat parts in the yard. Doesn't matter. They mm -hmm. hear it. I so if he's sleeping during the day and, and we're doing our daily routine, you know, there's going to be disruption. Disrupt. If I come in the house and go, hey, hey, hey I hope, you know, they'd be a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, you know, uh, I, I would just hope that, you know, he was sound, soundly sleeping and that he would just sleep through it, but occasionally you would hear a bark out from him. Or he had his headphones on. Yeah. So when you said you brought him back in December, do you remember when first part of December, end of December? I had to look up, it'd be early part of December because I was trying to get him out of there. Uh, I thought it was the end of November. Uh, it could have been at the very end of November or the very first part of December because I didn't want to owe one another month's rent. Mm -hmm. I wanted him out of there. Did. And, but did he mention if they were split up at that time or if they were still? Well, they, yeah, they were uh, supposed to be supposed to be officially broken up. Mm -hmm. and did he ever say why they broke up? They just, well, I mean, yeah. yes, yes and no. I mean, Jen told me as recent of, recently as last week, she didn't want him as a partner. Mm -hmm. She realized that he was not going to be a good partner. But I assume that they both recognized that they wanted to go their separate ways. And I would say that occurred several months before because there was one time he mentioned he, he was socializing with somebody at disney and that didn't that didn't go well over well or something she didn't like that so so i told him we both told him he would never get into a healthy relationship until he got away from her because what are you going to do you're renting a room you're going to bring a new woman to your room with your ex in the next room mm -hmm. i mean that's a bad recipe did this, this, uh, did this ever happen within the last seven years? Did they break up and get back together and that sort of thing? Or I, so. I, I seem to recollect that there was, um, there might have been a pause in that relationship, maybe to the extent of how involved the relationship was, and maybe it became more social than more than more of a relationship type of thing. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, clueless as to exactly the extent of uh, how involved the relationship really was. I mean, I always thought it was just good friends and, and you know, sex with benefit type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know how committed they were to one another. And that was going on all the way up until December? Well, actually, you think? before December, because like I said, when he went into the room on his own, that basically was probably the, the time uh, that the relationship ended. So, mm -hmm. uh, Do you remember when that was? You said I, November? Yeah, I would have tried to see. He left in December, maybe three or four months before he pulled out of there. I think okay. only paid three or, or four months at 600, maybe three months. I'd have to look it Do up. Do you know if when he came back here in December, was he ever making trips back to Kissimmee at all? There was, um, 
there was, I think, three occasions he went back. This, this last trip, mm-hmm. with when all this stuff happened, uh, a trip before that, and then he went back for Thanksgiving. Or he was there for Thanksgiving. So, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, so he he wasn't invited to the family events, and uh, but he was there at that time. Okay. Um, I'm assuming just visiting Jen and not... Or was he visiting other people? He's visiting Jim. Yeah, I, I would associate him with at that time. Okay. I don't think he had any relationships outside of Jim. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I think there was a, a time or two he mentioned that he was going to go out with some cast members after work. Mm-hmm. But Air was one of them. Yeah, but uh, that's the only that's the only time. Has he ever lived in Kissimmee prior to meeting Jim? No. No. Okay. Always. Here, in Northport, or has he lived out? Well, we moved here. We moved here in May of 2020, so he was always at our home there, or he lived here. And then, okay, we finally got him out of here, and, it's, and there was an opportunity for him to go live in Kissimmee. Okay, but with Jen is yeah. when he went to Kissimmee. Yeah, yeah, not on his own. They were both supposed to be working at Disney together, but she can't keep a job. Mm-hmm. Do you know why? Because they're the bipolar. Well, she doesn't. She doesn't. She want, doesn't want to lose her her state benefits. But depending on the type of work, she had back issues or something. Mm-hmm. So she could do physical things. Now she's she did have a job as a concierge that didn't require any pressure or stress on her back or something. Mm-hmm. But there was always something that prevented her from working. Couldn't do dog sitting, whatever uh, whatever job it was. It would last no more than a, two weeks, and then she. Be, she was going to go to school for nursing. And I'm thinking, oh my God, save the world. Well, then she was going to get into graphic design. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dad bought her an Apple computer thinking she was going to take these classes or online. And that didn't last long either. And you're hearing this from? From her. Stephen. Oh, from both of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing that we're basically telling you is a lot of it's hearsay from what we were told. We didn't physically observe this. Mm-hmm. And it is a very, very little interaction with them. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when they were here, you know, they were either in Stefan's room, Maddie always slept with Debbie, but um, they, and Maddie floated around here, played with the dogs, did, did things that little girls do with Debbie. We did some arts and crafts together. You were te- teaching her knitting? Crocheting. Crocheting, yeah. So that was going to be my next question. So Jen and Maddie and Stefan come, came here to visit yeah. at some point, or a few times maybe. Yeah. But if he was here, living here, she would actually come down. Yeah. Okay. And, and, but again... Very few trips. The last trip we saw them was, and we didn't see, but I think we saw them early 2023 and then maybe for Thanksgiving 2022. Okay. And then when they were here, you said Stefan and Jen would sleep in or would hang out in Stefan's room. Mm -hmm. And then Maddie would sleep with you, be with you. Okay. Why, why is that? Number one, he's a slob. Number Mm -hmm. two, he only has a queen size bed. Okay. And number three, I didn't think it was a healthy environment. Mm-hmm. Like they were going to have her sleeping on the floor on, on a sleeping bag. And I said, I have a king size bed. I sleep on 36 inches of it. Mm-hmm. There's a whole side of a bed. Mm-hmm. Why can't she be comfortable? So I just insisted that she come in with me. And I had the dogs with me. So if she got up as she, what Jen used to tell me was, you know, she would wake up in the middle of the night. She'd come and climb in bed with them. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you're going to have the dogs here. If you get out of bed, you're gonna you're gonna rouse the dogs up. I got you. Did they ever talk about their sleeping arrangements at their house in Kissimmee? Just just what I just told you mm-hmm. that, that if she had a, a bad dream or something, she would come in. And I told her as as Maddie got older, because we've known Maddie for seven years, we watched her grow up. I mean, mm-hmm. this, is, this is very this is very hard, but she um. Sweet girl, she was, but then she started in the last year, she started showing signs of bipolar as well. Mm-hmm. And um, Jen was horrified by that. They were butting heads like two rams, they were fighting all the time, and they're, they're presenting a very different family dynamic than what they told us was going and on. And you witnessed them butting heads, or um, no, I, I, I would be on the phone with Steph and I would hear them going at each other in the background but that's you know wow 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 that's new 
She ain't said yeah, they had their arguments, but nothing, nothing that bad. Last time they had uh, an argument was what three weeks ago. I think it was a daily thing with that with Madeline and her mum. I really do. I wonder if because Jane is so cold. You know what I mean? That's a, that's how I feel. That she's so, so cold towards her daughter being missing at the beginning. And even when they found her unalive, she didn't believe the police then that Stephen was involved. She's picking, putting Stephen over her own daughter. We heard in one interview, and they, they do touch on that, that she sent Maddie upstairs with Stephen the Sunday night. She gave him the red light, the green light, I should say. Go ahead. Right? Go ahead. And I would say, what's going on? Well, Maddie and Jenny are at it again, you know, and I got to go. I got to go break this up. So he would go be the peacekeeper. But I, I just put that down to puberty. She went to mm -hmm. puberty. She started puberty at 11. Right. It's hormones in me, but... Anyhow, um, she developed quickly, became pretty precocious, and other than that, I don't think she had a lot of friends at school. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that she was a very social person. She had been, if you remember, Stephanie and Jen both told us that after she began developing physically that there were some boys at school last year that would push her up against the wall and grab a feel and bully her. Mm -hmm. And they were having a hard time with the school getting it stopped. Mm. But. but anyway, when they visited here, she was either out here or they were watching movies together. But it, when it came to sleeping time, she was definitely in, in, in Deb's room. Yeah. Okay. Any time where either Jen and Maddie would be sleeping in that room without Stefan or. Yeah. Okay, so the only person that would separate from them would be Maddie when she was sleeping with you. Oh. And, and like I say, she was always floating around because, you know, she was bored. Mm -hmm. she was and before doing. that, as you see the holes, we had a TV there. We didn't have one in my room that was big, very big, but we moved that one. So we would, I would sit out here with Maddie when they were in there and we watched TV together too. We even got the Disney Channel for us, so she'd have it. Mm -hmm. um, Do you know if Maddie or Jen, when they were hanging, sleeping here were they taking did they take medicine at night or anything like that that you know of? no they or did stefan take any was his has he been prescribed any medication he has been prescribed an anti-anxiety medication and a um adhd medication he's got adderall and something chromadine some for sleeping mm -hmm. i don't know what the first part of it is but really didn't know his medical routines at all hers or Jen's, other than the fact that... Uh, she was always changing medications. Mm -hmm. She was, uh, I, I think, taking medication for depressant and uh, anxiety and bipolar. But I don't know anything beyond that. She had a prescription for, for uh, mar medicine, medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. And so she medical marijuana. Is that what she used in her vape then? Wow. She... she she faked all the time and she shared it with Stefan. I wouldn't allow it in my house. I don't like the smell of it. Mm -hmm. I said, if you're gonna do that, you have to you have to be outside. I just can't bring it in here. Now, after Stefan moved back here in December and he made the trips back to Kissimmee, would he drive the silver car? Your, no, your that's car, the first or? time he ever drove the no, silver no, car. No, 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 no. He drove the silver car oh, because his car was in dire need of uh, servicing. So I said, last thing I wanted to do is go two hours north and be stranded. Now I'm dealing with a disabled car. Mm -hmm. So uh, I knew that car was up in maintenance, so I let him drive that car. What's wrong with his car? It's it's uh, a thousand miles over service. The brake shops need to be done. He hasn't taken care of that car at all. It's probably going to need about 
two two to three thousand dollars worth of repair on it. I'm sure if mm -hmm. I take it in, if I take it in, I'm sure it's going to be two to three thousand dollars. AC was been acting up on it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I didn't trust it for long trips. If he was just commuting to, if he was in Kissimmee commuting to Disney, that's one thing, but not long trips. Right. Matter of fact, I had him tow it down here and not drive it down. Got it. So. Is it safe to say this last time he came and then maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas is when he took the silver car or Thanksgiving? So this last time, then um, um, he made it. He, when he came down here, he made he made a trip. Uh, when he first got down here, he made another trip back to get more stuff. Okay. So that was one trip. And then there was a trip in, trip in between. Um, I, think, I, I guess he went up for Christmas. Um, because uh, I think he was here for Thanksgiving, um, and then there was this 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 re most recent trip. So as far as I know, I think it was his three trips. Now, when he would come back from there, would he have like loads of stuff? Like, I don't want to say. Friend. Hold on. So his father's got payment to that six hundred pound a month rent for that room in the November twenty twenty three. And that's when Stefan moved out in the beginning of December. And Jen made it out like, oh, we had a, a job opportunity or something like that. But that wasn't the reason. The reason he moved out was because his dad stopped paying the rent on the room. So why didn't Maggie get that room? Why didn't Maggie have that fourth room? Move all his stuff out, put it in boxes in the living room in the corner, right? And move her all her stuff into that room and do it out for her, do it up nice for her. Why? Furniture because the it, furniture, it would just but... be leftover stuff that you know for whatever reason he had a ten foot truck mm -hmm. and just the front end of it and all of the, the back was available. So he rented a moving truck to grab. I rented it. Oh, okay, you know it was more truck that he needed uh -huh. and why he didn't get everything he he had was ridiculous because basically they came down to his typical most operandi. He waited till the last minute mm -hmm. and then. Plus, if he wasn't living there no more, paying rent there no more, why was the gun still there? Why was his camera stand still there? You know what I mean? Why was all that stuff still there if he wasn't living there no more? That gun should have even got out of that house when he left in the November. Mm -hmm. Didn't have enough time to put stuff up there or whatever, but he didn't bring everything back with him. Okay. Uh, did he say why he didn't grab his stuff? He didn't have to. Yeah. Well, basically, if he did, it wasn't enough. He didn't have enough time. He's like, bullshit. I, mm -hmm. He had weeks to plan for this. You know, I kept on him about that. He's completely opposite me. I, I, I start to organize stuff and get stuff done, not wait till the last minute, but he waited until the last minute. Very frustrating. How long was he in Kissimmee when he made these trips? Well, he stayed up there. If he went up there, he went up. He was up there for the day. Maybe, maybe he stayed up there a day or two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually, usually. And, um, nice no, no rush to get back. Mm -hmm. No urgency to come back. This last time he went up here, uh, or, or to Kissimmee, did he say why he was going to Kissimmee? Her birthday. Her birthday. Okay. Did he say he was invited to a party or anything like that? Or I think Maddie he was asked, 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 asked him to him please come. And you heard I, Maddie call? Okay. Yes. And any yeah, idea? Do you remember when that was? Because I, I know she had a party on Sunday. Do you know was when? it Saturday? I guess. Or was it to make sure he was coming? Something was something odd with on Saturday, right. um, and. Um, I don't know if he was he invited on Saturday, or, or or did he just say Sunday I'm going to kiss him? No, we knew we knew I knew the week before because I found the okay. uh, the gifts for Maddie. 
Okay. Um, he seemed to be very upset. He was, he, matter of fact, he came to me and said, do you have any anxiety medication? I go, no, sorry, don't, don't have anything like that. Everything I have is for diabetes or, or heart. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Debbie and said, I don't have any. And then he came back and said, well, I found some four-year-old stuff. I said, oh, okay. But he was, he was, he had, he was suffering from uh, high anxiety, man. I don't know what he was stressed out about. When was this? Uh, sometime in the evening. So Maggie phoned him on Saturday, from what I understand, to see if he was coming. So he says. But then on the Saturday evening, he was very anxious. He needed some anxiety medication. I think Maggie phoned him for another reason. And I think that's why when he went over on the Sunday, it, whatever happened in that home, Sunday night to Monday morning, happened. I don't know. Oh, Saturday or Saturday. days prior to that? Saturday. Okay. Yeah. And then he's making, and, and then I, I guess he, he, the medication worked and he, and again, he, he looked like he was like very stressed out. Have you ever seen him like that before? <sighs> yes. Uh, when he was very stressed out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was like, uh, better tiptoe, I'm not sure if he's going to blow up or not. You know, he seemed like he was calm enough, but, you know, I didn't know if anything could trigger him. Or mm -hmm. not. Did it seem like he was more in fear of something or scared of something or just... I, I You know, it, it was a different... Other than, you know, being really upset about something he looked like he was stressed out over something that obviously he, he never shared any of his feelings with us mm -hmm. and i had no idea he was stressing him out um but something really had him upset angry upset or just not that type of upset not angry upset but okay. just something worries him just right. seemed like there was something that was really preying on him and it was not sending well with him mm -hmm. And that's when he was told you guys he was going to Kissimmee or did he tell mom prior to that? Well, he was making, he was making plans to go to Kissimmee and he was, and, and I don't know exactly when this happened, whether he told me on Saturday, but I knew he was leaving Sunday because we talked about the expense of that trip and Jen, and he said, well, Jen's going to pay for the trip because I was, I was done paying for this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, she, and he said, well, Jen's going to pay for it. You know, I said, well, go down and fill up the car. I'll take care of that. That would be enough gas for him to get up and get back because that's all he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm assuming that the plans were submitted on Saturday, but you're telling me that you knew about it a week in advance and maybe he started planning that a week in advance, but I, was, I wasn't aware of it until the last month. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have this fearful reaction earlier that week. After, it was just that Saturday. Yeah. Um, did he say how long he planned on staying in Kissimmee? A week. A week. Yeah, I was planning for. I, we were planning on him going be, uh, to be gone for a week because we, we were welcoming the break. Mm -hmm. Got it. What did you buy her as a gift? You said he got her a gift. I had I had ordered something and um, it, they looked marvelous and but then I got it and I think this is really probably too juvenile for me to wear. It's called Mermaid Speeds and it's made out of sea glass mm -hmm. and it was a. a dual color bracelet and they had the stud earrings and the same thing and they, they were kind of opalescent so they're really neat it's by no goo and this it's mermaid tears but um i said you know these are still in the box i've never even worn them i said why i spend money on something this is something she would really like because I, I knew her enough to know this was something right up her alley and i said you know this is this is 90 dollars worth of a gift you know this is going to sit where it could be doing good someplace, somebody could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So just gave me the boxes and said, are you want to get wrap them? He said, no, I'll just take them like this. So. How did you guys come to hear about everything that happened on Monday? <clears throat> so I tried reaching Stefan. He called me when he got to Kissimmee Sunday 
Any idea when he called you? Uh, I know exactly because I wrote up the timeline this morning. Okay. Six if you hear that humming noise, like a drilling noise in the background, it isn't. I've got an old sky dish sitting on my balcony frame. And whoever had sky here before when they moved out, the sky people organisation did not come and remove the sky dish. And so when the wind blows, that's what you hear is the vibration from that and it's annoying so i'm going to have to sort that out and get the people out here empty my balcony out so they can get to that sky dish and get it removed what are you um but then i noticed on some paths that he was out around 8 30 8 48 and there were two sun paths uh tolls and i said well maybe they had gone out or something but i said hmm, okay that's a little weird um so that uh i tried to get a hold of him several times monday monday morning or maybe noonish or so maybe as late as 2 30 ish or something and then i get a call from him at 3 17. Mm -hmm. and his voice sounded a little off to me um I thought, well, maybe he was just, you know, tired and then maybe he didn't get a good night's sleep or what have you. And then during that conversation, he says, oh, by the way, I had a flat tire. <laughs> Radar goes up. I go, what do you mean you had a flat tire? Where could you have gotten a flat tire? Now, I'm not going to say you can't pick up a flat tire anywhere, mm -hmm. but he's just driving from here to the apartment and shouldn't be driving anywhere else, per se. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I just got a flat tire. Okay, where? 192. And, and and then he described the fact that the tire was so flat that he he ran the rubber off the wheel. Mm -hmm. Okay, 192, plenty of places to pull over and you're driving the, the rubber off the wheel. Mm -hmm. So then he described that he was changed to the tire, that the, didn't have it set right, and the jack collapsed somewhat and trapped his thumb between the frame and the, and the jack and didn't hurt himself severely. And I think the conversation lasted about three minutes. And I said, well, let's, let's get the car into to a uh, tire place and, and see what's going to cost to re repair it. I'm sitting there counting. It's going to cost me several hundred dollars for this now. Mm -hmm. And and then and that was it. And then 454. Um, I'm just getting out of the car, meeting a customer. I'm going, to, I'm going to take him into a house and he calls. And he says, uh, I'm, in, I'm in route to... Maddie's grandmother, there's been an occurrence. I said, well, that's a strange word to use, but okay. Um, and then I'm thinking, well, this is weird. Two events in one afternoon, the flat tire and now this. And so he said, well, I, I took Maddie to school this morning and I dropped her off uh, just out from the school uh, because Maddie didn't want to be seen dropped off in front of the school because I'm not driving a cool enough car. I said, okay, well, understand that. Teenager, peer pressure, what have you. Mm -hmm. And he said, I watched her, I watched her walk towards the school down the rear view mirror as I pulled away. And, and so then he goes on to describe that she was, uh, it's been reported that she wasn't schooling. We went to pick her up and uh, she wasn't there. Then we come to find out she had been to school all day. And then uh, he starts to describe um, that the area is a high abduction area. It kids, kids are stolen for abducted, kidnapped for sex trafficking. And um, um, that there's a good chance that she's been abducted. Mm -hmm. You know, the typical questions. You know, well, what have you done to try to locate her? Have you contacted her old friends, social media? Where's her phone? Oh, she left her phone at, at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, she does that from time to time. And uh, it was a three-minute conversation, and he he was he was sobbing. He was really sounded upset that he was holding himself responsible for this. Mm -hmm. Same routine that he did in that Tuesday interview. I think he was rehearsing it on me. Mm -hmm. 
And it was exactly the same routine, same explanation, the whole deal. And so then I kept in touch with them throughout the evening because they were waiting for police to show up and, and it was hours and, and I just kept checking in, any news, any news. And then, um, and then that was it until, until Tuesday. And then I didn't talk to him again until, until Tuesday, maybe it was the afternoon. And, um, again, just trying to get an update what's going on. And then, and then as the day expanded, then police were now more involved and, uh, there's interaction between, I guess, your department and, and the two of them. Mm -hmm. Did when backtracking to Monday. So you talked to him, you said you tried calling him. When you tried calling him, did it call go right to voicemail or did it ring a few times? Uh, how would they should have all of that? I mean, let me get the, my notepad. Uh, and by the way, Jim had mentioned several times that Maddie was going through a phase where she didn't want to look cool, uncool, and that it had become their routine to drop her off one block from school and pick her up one block from school. And she told you this? Is yes. Yes. And I never said anything about being a high traffic area or anything like that. She just said, you can, it's a straight shot school. There's an overpass. We make sure nobody's in the overpass, you know, mm -hmm. and out. And just, so we just watch. And then Stefan said he took her by himself. And then in the interview, Jen said, we brought him off. Mm -hmm. She said it several times. And so I, I don't know if, do you want any conjecture or no? Mm -hmm. The conjecture is that she and Maddie are the same size. Mm -hmm. She wore Maddie's clothes with the hoodie up to show them, to cover the dark hair instead of the light hair. And that was Jen himself sitting at the church in the picture. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, from what we've heard, Maddie was already gone by that time. Mm -hmm. See, did that so, mother just say it was Jed in that video of at the church? Wearing the black shorts and the green top. Walking away. Because we know at the time, as Mother said, Maddie was already dead. So was it Jen? That was mentioned before. People was going, could it have been Jen dressed as Maddie? Because when she was found, she didn't have black shorts on. She had jeans on. So this this elaborate charade put on for everybody's benefit mm -hmm. and she's cool calm and collected and he's a he's a he's a sobbing wet mess so my call to him at 225 was two seconds so no connection gotcha. and then he called me at 317 and that conversation lasted three minutes and you said he was upset at that time, or he seemed? No, he seemed he he seemed off, and I said, "Well, maybe you know, the anxiety medications or what have you was keeping him somewhat kind of flat, monotone in a way, mm -hmm. nothing oh, upbeat uh, about it." And then, oh, matter of factly, I, well, I had a flat tire. We talked about that, and then and then, did he plan on taking the car to a tire shop? Did you guys confirm that him, plan? Or? I told I told it to. I said you, he's driving on the donut. And he, we both confirmed that, you know, the donut wouldn't last long and that, you know, he needed to get that quickly replaced. And I expected him to do it. I, I didn't expect it to, for him to do it that day because that's not Stefan's modus uh, operandi. I, I expected him to do it the next day. Uh, so then I didn't hear from him until he called me at 4.54. Mm -hmm. And that conversation lasted three minutes. And... You know, as I said, uh, I, I heard this 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 uh, story about him dropping her off at school and and the whole abduction thing, and and I heard that even more later in the evening. But I I, I, I thought to myself, how strange these two events happened, and, and, and within a short time of one another that afternoon. Did you question him about it or no? No, I didn't think about it. You know. Before I go live. So, till then, 
You can unbuckle yourself for a bit until the next live one comes out. Till then, thank you for watching. Please hit that like. Please go and subscribe. I say hit the like more because it helps with the analytics and then YouTube pushes the video out more, which means more people get to see this video, hear this audio, which I think is the best one out of all the interviews. All of them.